this is a quick introduction to hydrostatic equilibrium. It is a special case of static equilibrium that involves fluids. The very word hydro comes from Latin meaning water. The original problem of derivation was why does pressure increase with depth in water? The more general application is why does pressure change with depth or height in any fluid? Here is the basic derivation. We will define the variable H as our depth and we will set our reference depth H naught at the surface. At this depth, we will have our reference pressure P zero as well. We want to know the pressure at some depth H. Because we expect pressure to increase with depth, we are going to set up a reference coordinate system with positive H downwards. We will take a sample volume within the fluid, knowing that because it doesn't accelerate up or down, it must be in static equilibrium. It is going to have a sample area of A and differential depth dH, such that the differential volume is going to be A times dH. Because this is static equilibrium, we must complete our free body diagram. Our differential volume has mass, hence, there's the force of gravity or weight acting on it. There's a force due to pressure from above and a force due to pressure from below. Because pressure increases with depth, this is going to be greater by an amount F uh, sub dp. There are forces from the sides as well due to pressure. However, due to the symmetry of this setup, they are going to cancel out and hence we are not going to consider them in this derivation. Weight, the force of gravity on our sample volume is of course going to be the differential mass times G. To get the differential mass in terms of variables that will be useful for us, consider that density designated by Greek letter rho is defined as mass over volume. In this case, the differential mass over the differential volume. That means we can rearrange this equation, substitute in for differential volume, and substitute back into our equation for the force of gravity. To get an expression for the force due to pressure, Remember that pressure is defined as the force vector divided by the area vector. Hence, the force due to pressure is just the magnitude of the pressure times the area. Similarly, we substitute in the pressure plus differential pressure, the whole thing multiplied by area, as the force expression for the pressure from below. 
now apply the expression for static equilibrium. According to Newton's second law, the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net outside force acting on it and inversely proportional to the mass of the object. In static equilibrium, there is no acceleration, hence the net force, in this case, the net force in the direction of depth must be zero. Let's combine this with our known forces that we will now substitute in from our free body diagram. Write out the forces acting on the object, then substitute in our previously derived expressions. We can do some simplifications here. Finally, let's rearrange for the differential pressure. This is the basic differential equation for pressure with depth for a fluid in hydrostatic equilibrium. At this point, the pressure with depth expression will depend on how density also may change with pressure. In this video, we will simplify it by considering only incompressible fluids for which density is constant regardless of pressure. Most liquids behave very close to this approximation. We start with our differential equation, then integrate from our reference depth to the depth we are interested in finding the pressure for. Note that the constants can be taken out of the integral. Then we integrate and solve for P. This is our equation of pressure with depth for an incompressible fluid. Notice this is actually the equation for a straight line. When graphing pressure with depth, it is traditional to switch the axis in that the independent variable is actually graphed in the vertical axis and the dependent variable, in this case pressure, is depicted on the horizontal axis. This is to help with visualization as H, depth, is visualized as a vertical coordinate. Also, if we are diving into depth, the depth increases downwards, as is the pressure. Let us demonstrate the use of this equation now on an example. The question is that if we dive below water, at what depth will our pressure increase to double the surface value? Pressure at the surface is assumed to be one atmosphere or 101.3 kilopascals. The density of water we will approximate as that of pure water at 1000 kilograms per cubic meter. G is of course 9.8 meters per second squared. And the pressure level we are interested in is two atmospheres. Algebraically rearrange the equation for the unknown before plugging in with numbers, with units, make sure to change to 
SI units, because pressure is measured in pascals to be compatible with kilograms and meters and seconds. Finally, we reach for the calculator and get our answer. This solution basically says that the pressure in water increases by one atmosphere for every 10 meters of depth. There can be similar problems involving different fluids of different densities, densities that are not constant with pressure, but the derivation and considerations will remain similar as long as hydrostatic equilibrium applies. In a later video, I will derive how this variation of pressure leads to buoyancy.